Good morning. Welcome to Adult and Youth Sunday School. Uh, we're looking at parables, and this morning's is a doozy. <laughs> so let's pray and get into it. Thank you, God, for you, for being you, uh, for loving us, your Lord, for giving us uh, chances to love you back. Um, I ask God that as we look at your word today, that you'd help us, your Lord, to uh, to see your truth and to know what we should do and to act accordingly. Uh, I thank you, God, for uh, these parables and for the opportunity we have to know you better. Um, please be with us now. In your name we pray, amen. Uh, this morning's, uh, what we're looking at is in Matthew 21, uh, kind of is on the tails of what we did last week. It actually is the very next verse. Uh, he says, let me tell you another parable. <laughs> and uh, that's where we are this week. And um, so let's just uh, jump into it. It's in Matthew chapter 21 and verses 33 and on. It says, listen to another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard. He, plant, he put a wall around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a watchtower. He then, which is the sermon this morning, so please pay attention to that. He then rented out the vineyard to some farmers and went away on a journey. When the harvest time approached, he sent his servant to collect the fruit. The ser this tenant seized the servants. They beat one, killed another, stoned a third. Then he sent another, uh, other servants to them more than the first time, and the tenants treated them the same way. Last of all, he sent his son to them. They will respect my son, he said. But when the tenants saw the son coming, they said to each other, This is the heir. Come, let's kill him and take his inheritance. So they took him and threw him out of the vineyard and killed him. Therefore, when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those tenants? He will bring those wretches to a wretched end, they replied, and he will rent the vineyard to other tenants who will give him his share of the crop at harvest time. Jesus said to them, Have you never read the scriptures? The stone that the builders rejected has become the capstone. The Lord has done this, and it is marvelous in, his, in our eyes. Therefore, I tell you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to people who will produce its fruit. He who falls on the stone will be broken to pieces, but he whom it falls on will be crushed. When the chief priests and Pharisees heard Jesus' parables, they knew he was talking about them. and They looked for a way to arrest him, but they were afraid of the crowd because the people held that he was a prophet. Um, and so... <laughs> this is where we are today. Uh, we're taking a look at this parable, which has some real life applications for where we are today. And um, and I think it's important to see here. Now, this is important. If we look back at this chapter, chapter 21, just to understand the context here. Uh, at the beginning of the chapter, we have the triumphal entry. So he Jesus comes in. People are like, this is great. This is great. Then he goes to the temple. He clears the temple from all the stuff that should not have been there. And then he, uh, they question his authority. Whose authority do you do this by? Which is the first conversation at the temple. And he tells them, um, yeah, let, let, let's just talk about these things. And they're like, oh, we can't ask these questions. And then he jumps into that parable that we looked at last week. of The two sons, the one who did not obey at first, but then obeyed. And the other one who said they were going to obey, but didn't obey. And the Pharisees like, err. And then he tells this one on top of that, which is why they say, we've got to arrest and kill this guy. We've got to get rid of him. We've got to get rid of him. Because they know this is directed at us. And so, so we look at this, you know. Um, it's easy to say that this, that the tenets of the story, okay, obviously the, the master who goes away, that's, that's God. And he lends these to the people. And the, the tenets that are there, the wicked tenets, are obviously... The religious leaders because the religious leaders they heard about it and they didn't do it and they end up with the one killing them but remember though uh when it comes to this in a couple chapters here um the crucifixion the people are the ones the, the the leaders are the ones who arrest him and they're the ones who put him on trial but the people are the ones who yell crucify him crucify him and so i, I don't think this parable was just about the leaders <laughs> i think it's also about the people and the choices that they made and the choices that we make as well. We are not innocent in this of, well, I mean, the leader said this is what we're doing, so that's what we did. I mean, that's just what it was. That's not fair. Um, because there needs to be some personal responsibility for what, what's happening here. Uh, I think it's interesting, you know, why would the tenants not provide the food? Um, be, again, just, sorry, one more thing here. Both groups, the leaders and the people, rejected the Messiah. 
they did that. And when we reject the Messiah, there are consequences. And we'll talk about those here very shortly. So uh, why did they refuse? Why didn't they provide the food? Well, uh, obviously, they did not believe the master was coming back. And if you don't believe there are consequences for your actions, then what's to stop you? What's to stop that student in the classroom? If they don't believe there's consequences, are they really going to obey and do the things they're supposed to do? No. What about those small children in the grocery store? If they don't believe there's consequences, are they going to stop crying or wailing or throwing themselves on the floor or grabbing at everything off the aisle? No, they're not going to do that. Let's make it a little more personal for you young adults and uh, <laughs> and adults. Uh, what, what about if that, that country road where the speed limit says 35, <clears throat> but you know there are no cops in town? What do you think? There's no consequences, and I really need to get there. Or, uh, what about that buffet line? <laughs> Cracks me up there, thinking about that. Um, and so we look here and we say, man, you know, are there consequences? And the answer has to be yes. There are consequences for our actions. Um, the, another interesting part to notice about these, these, uh, these people there, were they doing, the tenants, were they doing work? They were. They were working you not necessarily for the man. I mean, they were they were working in the vineyard, and, and he had done everything that he could. Um, he 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 built the wine press. He built the watchtower. He built the walls to protect the grapes, to protect the people that were working for the grapes. He did that job, and and, and they were working there. Except they didn't see it as working for him. They saw it as we're doing the stuff for the vineyard. And I think a lot of times uh, people in church get that same impression of, I'm doing the good work here for the church. It's not for Jesus, though. It's for the church. And so when, when Jesus says, hey, but I need you to go do this, there's that discussion of, what, but, but I'm doing this, Jesus, and this is what I need to do. This is what the church needs. And people are like, well, wait. But Jesus said, but I am asking you to do this. And so sometimes we get so wrapped up in what we think we need to be doing that we actually miss what Jesus says we should be doing. And so that's the hard part of we have to be listening and in tune with the Spirit. Otherwise, we're going to miss it. We're going to miss those servants to come. Now, notice those servants that came, bad things happened. Some they sent away, but some they beat, some they stoned, some they killed. And you think, Jesus, we don't do that to people, though. Like, we don't, at our church, we don't treat people that way. By sending people away and not giving them the help they need, what are we doing? Or by not greeting someone, by giving someone a look. And I know you can't control everyone else. We can't. I wish that I could. I wish there was a little bit of it. We can't control. And so we have to find a way to say, okay, God, um, I'm trusting you. How can you help use me today? How can I be looking for what you're doing today? How can I be there? Because if we're not there, we're going to miss it, and that's some, some dire consequences here. God's called us to more, and so we need to be about more. We need to be doing the things we need to be doing here. Again, why would they kill the son? I mean, oh, sorry, Matthew 25, it talks about that practical, when Jesus separates the sheep and the goats, that's a couple chapters here, uh, which is later on this week uh, that we're talking about. He talks about this, this practical service. So, you say you love me, are you visiting those that are in the hospital, those that are in the prison? Are, are you clothing people that are naked? Are you feeding the hungry and getting them something to drink? Are you doing those practical things? That that's that's what this is about here. I'm sending these servants to you to give give me a portion of it. That's mine. It's all mine. Instead, though, this is how you're treating them. They don't believe that he's coming back. They don't believe there's going to be consequences for their actions. And so when the sun comes, why would you kill the sun? Well, I don't, did I, did we get any consequences when we did the other stuff? No. So, you know, what's to stop us now? It's a dangerous thing. I mean, I think the church would be very different if God started smiting people with lightning. I really do. I really do. And so, I'm not, I mean, I'm not saying that God should kill people, but I remember Ananias and Sapphira, the church changed when people were struck down. 
when there's immediate consequences for the actions. There's a change, right? There's a change. So, why would they kill the son? Well, that's that's what happened here. Uh, I want to read you guys another passage, um, which is interesting also. It's in Isaiah uh, chapter 5, and it is the Song of the Vineyard. And um, I was reading a commentary, and it connected this, and I said, I like it. So here's the Song of the Vineyard in, from Isaiah chapter 5. I will sing for the one I love a song about his vineyard. My love... Loved one has a vineyard on a fertile hillside. He dug it up and cleared it of stones and planted it with choices of vines. He built a watchtower on it, cut out a wine press as well. Then he looked for a crop of good grapes, but it yielded only bad fruit. There's another version that says bitter, bitter grapes. Now you, Jerusalem, what else could I have? Dwellers of Jerusalem and men of Judah, judge between me and my vineyard. What more could I have been could have been done for it than I that I did when I looked for good grapes? Why did it only yield bad? Now I will tell you what I'm going to do to my vineyard. I'll take away its hedge, uh, and it will be destroyed. I'll break down this wall; it'll be trampled. I'll make it a wasteland, neither pruned nor cultivated. Briars, thorns will grow there. I command the clouds, no rain. The vineyard of the Lord Almighty in the house of Israel, in the garden of His light. But He looked for justice and saw bloodshed; for righteousness, but He heard cries of distress. Now, in Isaiah. He just breaks it down and says, I'm done with this. In Matthew here, he talks about this. I'm going to come back. I'm going to kill the people that have done this bad stuff. And then I'm going to give this. I'm not done with this. This vineyard is something that's worth keeping. And I'm going to give it to new tenants to run. Now, can you imagine the job description? Uh, we'd like to hire you here. It's good. Just be aware. The last ones, you know, they didn't really quite like, like work out. You know, the whole system. They, they killed some servants that I sent and my son, and so I killed them all. You have the job. <laughs> Can you imagine? Can you imagine? And so, uh, But that's where it is. And, and so think about these new tenants that God is, is providing here. Is it not us? Is it not the church today? How are we being faithful with, with what is here? And the one verse there at the end said, you know, we, I need something to produce fruit and so you think about the produce the fruit that we are producing are we producing what god has called us to produce and then again are we also giving back to god what is his what is already his it's not ours god has called us to do more and and so here we are what, what, what do we do with this i think the, the real challenge uh for us is is to look and say man when God is slow in the consequences, when God is not striking people dead, how do we live and operate in a way that is honoring to him, even though we can't see him, even though he is seemingly far away? He has given us what we need, and yet don't get so busy with the stuff that we're doing that we miss him when he shows up at the door. Um... God has challenged me with, with this as, as, as I was preparing it, and, um, and I hope it's challenged you as well. Uh, not, not that I'm, again, not that I'm afraid that God is coming to, to start striking me dead, but at the same time, how am I continually living to give back to God what is His? It's His. How can I live in such a way to do that? Um, uh, oh, finally... Um, last thought there, uh, the capstone. So he talks about that capstone business. And um, in the earlier translation, this is this is one place um, where things uh, are um, talked about here. We keep, The earlier version just says stone. The, the more recent versions of the things say capstone, giving it more context. Um, and so what he says was, have you never read the scriptures? The stone that the builders rejected has become the capstone. The Lord has done this, and it is marvelous in uh, our eyes. That's from Psalms 118, verses 22 and 23. Uh, Therefore, I tell you, the kingdom of God will be taken away and given to other people. Uh, oh, wait. Uh, yeah. He who falls on the stone will be broken to pieces. But he who fall, who it falls on will be crushed. Um, and so this idea... <clears throat> uh, 
when we come in contact with God's word, with with the, with who He is, something something has to give. <laughs> something has to give. Um, and and it's so in our world today, uh, people don't like to hear that. People don't like to hear that they have to change, and that if they don't change, that it's, it's going to happen to them. But Jesus is saying, listen, you can't just follow me and keep doing the things you need to do. The, the capstone, the capstone is, is the stone that fits in, that holds the whole arc, uh, the whole bridge together. It's that part there. It's the part of the building that says, this is the build, we're building the rest of the building around this stone, around this foundational piece. Um, <laughs> Parks and as uh, and Mags were watching the Veggie Tales yesterday, where um, they're building, they're, it's a wise man, a foolish man. And so they're building different things on the stone and, and they keep saying the foundation, uh, the foundation this strong, oh, what is it? Foundation this strong will stay along or something like that. And it's this idea that if we don't have our foundation this right, it's it's not going to work. It's not going to last like we want it to and last like it needs to. And of course, in the story, the rains come and everyone who did not build their foundation, even with good solid bricks, if the foundation wasn't good, it was gone. And so we need to make sure that what we are building is, is, is on a good foundation, uh, which is God's word, uh, which is time with other believers. We need to make sure that we're building strong lives and strong families. Uh, that's what's going to make the difference in this community. Um, let's pray. Dear God, I thank you so much for who you are and the plans that you have. I thank you that you are the capstone, dear Lord, and that you are the thing that holds us together uh, as, a, as a person, as a family, as a community, as a church. I ask God that you would help us to hear your words more clearly. Help us, your Lord, to, to be diligent uh, with how we are uh, tending your vineyard. Help us, dear Lord, to um, thank you for how you provided. <laughs> in, in the story of the Master, provided all the things that were needed. And I ask God that you continue to provide the things that we need to do your work. I thank you, God, for who you are and for the plans you have for us individually and as families, and, and as your church in this community. Uh, bless us now and, and guide us. In your name we pray, amen. Have a great day, guys. Happy Father's Day. And um, make sure you catch the sermon later. Uh, it is on um, the watchman and the need for us uh, to be diligent in, in keeping watch uh, and sounding the alarm and staying true to God's word. Uh, it's a good sermon. Hope you catch it then. Thanks.